guys and welcome to the second video that we have in this unit. Uh, today we're going to talk about a concept called electric potential. So kind of similar to electric potential energy but not the same. So if you remember from our last video this was a graphic that we uh, used to talk about how to calculate the electric potential energy of this configuration or if this configuration was already in place and we wanted to bring this fourth charge we call Q naught into this position how much energy that would require or how much work that would require so here is the formula it's kqq over r remember that this is the same thing as k and we are summing up all of those potential energies between Q naught and qi and in this case we have three one two three so if you can look at this equation, if you think about it, if you removed the test charge or took the test charge out of this picture, um, the uh, remaining equation would remain constant. So if we do that here, if we do that here, this is what our formula would look like. So we call that the electric potential or the equation for potential energy without the test charge in it. So you sometimes will see this written as KQ over R. And so we have uh, potential is KQ over R. And what exactly are we calculating whatever we calculate electric potential? So what I like to think of is it's the amount of energy that a charge, a test car or a charge has the potential to have at that location. So we measure potential in a unit called volts, so it's voltage, where it, which is where this V comes from. So V equals KQ over R. And the concept of electric potential is kind of weird for some students to grasp at first, so I like to make the analogy between the gravitational field and the electric field. So if I have a configura configuration of charges like I did in the previous picture, right, my electric potential would represent the amount of energy a charge could have if I placed it at that spot. Much like with our gravitational potential energy formula, right, we, we learned that gravitational potential depends on the mass, the field that you're in, and the height or your location. So this is kind of like saying um, the gravitational potential energy formula without the mass in it. So it kind of represents the amount of energy a person or an object could potentially have at this height. But of course that's going to depend on the actual mass of the object, just like the energy that the charge has here is going to depend on how large the charge is. But, you know, in electricity we consider everything or we uh, develop everything with the idea of a test charge in mind. So this is more like the amount of energy that uh, a charge could potentially have at that location. So it's also important to remember that at infinite distance, meaning super far away from the configuration or the charge, uh, you have a potential of zero. So, um, I just mentioned that uh, on the last slide. So volts, if you uh, think about it, is energy per charge, or how much energy a, a charge could have at that spot. And so when we look at voltage, what we're lo really looking at is the amount of joules per coulomb is possible at that location. So a couple of good ideas to keep in mind for solving electric potential problems, uh, either positive or negative. So as you move in the direction opposite to the electric field, your potential will increase. If you move in the same direction as the electric field, your potential will decrease. So let's think about that real quick. We have a positive and we have a negative charge. So let's say there's an electric field here that points from the positive to the negative, like you guys were taught that electric fields go. So remember that electric potential and everything that we do in electricity, we always do it with the idea of a point charge. So let's stick a point charge or a test charge right here. It's positive. 
So the first thing says the potential increases if you move in the direction opposite. So if I go up the stream, essentially, right, I'm going back towards the positive charge. Well, that takes a lot of energy. This energy of this test charge, because it doesn't want to go this way naturally, you have to put work into it to make that happen. That will increase the energy of this test charge and thus increase the potential for that test charge. Um, and then if you look at it the opposite way, if you just release it and let it go, well, now it's going to be going towards an area of low potential, right? Or an area where it has a, um, a lower potential energy. Okay, so let's look at a conceptual example. Here we have an electric field, these blue lines labeled E, they all point to the right, and we have three points, A, B, and C. So what is the potential difference between A and B? So something super important uh, in physics is the potential difference. A lot of times we don't really calculate, I mean we do and we can calculate the electric potential at a specific point, but we are more concerned with a potential difference or the amount um, of difference between two different locations. So that's what this question is asking about. What is the, the potential difference between A and B? We have three options. Is it positive, is it zero, or is it negative? Well, when you look at this location, A and B are in the same relative horizontal location in this electric field. So because of that, because they are at essentially the same R away um, from either this plate of charges or this plate of charges or uh, whatever is creating this electric field, since essentially they are exactly the same distance away, they're going to have exactly the same electric potential. All right, same configuration, different question. Um, points A, B, and C lie in a uniform electric field. Point C is at a higher potential than point A. Is that true or false? Well, where is C uh, in relationship to A? It is further downstream, right, or further in the direction of decreasing potential. So that would mean that point C has a lower potential than point A. So that's false. Okay, so let's look at the third example, same graphic. If a negative charge is moved from point A to point B, its electric potential energy will do what? Well, we already talked about how A and B, the electric potential at point A is the same as the electric potential at point B. So consequently, if you are moving the same charge, it's a negative charge, if you move it from point A to point B, it will encounter no change in potential energy. So its potential energy will remain the same if you do that because, uh, we're going to talk about this in a second, but it's moving along what's called an equipotential line or a line of equal potential. Okay, so let's talk about work and the idea behind potential energy. So the work done by the force when it moves a test charge from two different locations in a field, uh, work is the integral of force times distance, right? But we learned that force is QE. So um, if we plug in QE for that, and then, whew, there we go. Um, what we end up getting when we divide through by the test charge is that the electric potential, right, is, the, or the difference, remember what we care about a lot is the difference, is the integral, or rather the negative integral, because this is VA minus VB, so we have to flip it. Um, from a, along a line in the electric field. So we're going to uh, take a look at one of those examples, but before I go through that, I just want to make sure um, you guys kind of see how all this stuff is related. So remember that uh, work is change in potential energy, right? We talked about that before. So that's KQQ over R. So if I have that KQQ over R, and then I'm dividing through by my test charge on both sides here and over here because the test charge is going to remain constant so I can pull that out of my integral. Then what I end up with is KQ over R, which is electric potential, right? So it's also important to note that potential energy can be equal to Q, right, V. 
electric potential times the charge that you are placing in that area of potential. So, or we just learned that the change in potential is E dot DL. So another way to look at it, uh, let me see if it's on this last slide here. Uh, no, then we have some concepts. Okay, so another way to look at it if you're, if you're in a situation where these things aren't changing is to say U equals QV or V uh, is EL, or I think on your formula chart it might be written as ER. Sometimes it's, it's written as that a lot of the time. So U equals negative QER as well, or QED. So there's multiple different ways to find your potential energy. You can use this, or you can use this, or you can use this. And it really just depends on what is happening in the problem. Okay, so um, here we can see that the electric field is equal to the rate of, or the change in the potential over the distance. So because of this negative sign, the electric field points in the direction of decreasing potential. So as I said before, we care about potential differences because this tells us how much work it's re is required to move a charge from place to place when you start looking at potential differences. So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, if you want to move in a region of electric field without changing your electric potential energy, you would have to do what? Move parallel or perpendicular? So the work done right, by the electric field when a charge moves from one point to another is the integral from A to B of F dot DL. But F is QE times DL. So the way no work is done is if the integration path is perpendicular to the electric field. So what that means, this is a lot of uh, uh, math speak, but essentially this shows exactly what we showed on the last conceptual problem. Because these guys are the same distance away from whatever is creating this electric field, they are in spots A and B, then the change from A to B is nothing. So if there is no change, right, if they are the same horizontal distance away, B is at the same distance as A, then you're not going to get any work done. So you have to travel perpendicular to the electric field to have no work, which means um, it's moving at a constant velocity, right? All right, let's look at the next one. A positive charge is released from rest in a region of electric field. The charge moves towards a region of smaller, along a path of constant, or towards a region of greater electric potential. So remember, here's our electric field. I'm gonna slap a positive charge in the middle of it. Where does it wanna go? It always wants to follow the field lines, and the field lines always point in the direction of decreasing electric potential. So, um, that is our answer there, and that's the mathy reason is uh, explaining the negative sign, right? That negative is going to tell us a, a region of decreasing or less. Uh, or yes, in this case. So, oh, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but potential is a, or voltage is a uh, scalar product. So that works exactly like electric potential energy where there's no direction associated with it. It's either um, a region of greater or larger potential ener or greater or larger electric potential with positive or an area of less with negative. Okay, um, we have been using joules for energy for forever, but there is another unit of energy that you will see from time to time and it's called the electron volt. Um, so the electron volt is equal to um, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And that's just an extra conversion you guys might need to know to do some of your work. Okay, so this is stop, but I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on going real quick for another minute or two. So I mentioned equipotential services earlier, um, but it's possible to move a test charge from one point to another without having any work done if you move it along a line of equipotential, right? So if the potential is the same, um, then you haven't done any work on the object. So let's look at some equipotential surfaces. So here is our positive charge. These pink lines represent the electric field and these blue lines represent areas of equipotential. So if I start here in the middle and I look out, 
right? If I go out from this charge, I'm at a particular distance r away from it. And all along that distance r will be a line of equipotential. Because if I move along that distance, well, my electric field is staying the same. My distance is staying the same. Um, so my voltage will stay the same all along that circle. And then here's another one with a little bit uh, more complicated configuration. But you guys are going to get to draw some of those uh, in lab. So the field does no work as it moves along the equipotential surface. So since there's no work, there's no force. Um, and the electric field is perpendicular always to the line of equipotential. All right. So I'm going to stop there for today, and I will see you guys later.